This is our second video for using social stories to improve social impairments. In this video, we will discuss some of the guidelines to writing an effective social story. In our first video, we discussed the history and rationale behind social stories. So if you haven't already looked at that one, I suggest that you go back because that, that contains a lot of helpful information um, in terms of the research and theory behind social stories. In order to write a beneficial social story for a student, it is critical to view their individual perspective. The student's perspective will actually determine what you write and what the social story focuses on. As the author of the social stories, we start to conceptualize the story based on the desired target behavior we either want the student to improve or to replace with another more appropriate behavior. When we step into the shoes of the student to observe their perspective, demonstrating that target behavior, we need to imagine what would they hear? What would they see, smell, and touch while they're exhibiting that target behavior? So for example, if I was conceptualizing a story based on standing in line appropriately, um, let's say that the student has a sensitivity to being touched. The social story would explain that sometimes another st student may touch them because they're ready for the line to move forward or they're just adjusting their clothes or raising their hand. So in that example, you step into the, the student's perspective and explain what's happening based on that perspective. In addition to writing the story based on the perspective of the student. Let's look at two of the guidelines that Carol Gray established for writing social stories. Um, so she said that when writing the story, it should be written within the student's level of comprehension and vocabulary. And then also that the text should be written in the font and size that's appropriate for that student. So, when looking at it based on the student's current comprehension, that could mean that it may not even be a whole sentence on the page. It could just be one word. Also, um, I have used objects in place of the pictures with one word so that the student can truly comprehend what is being conveyed on each page. Also, research has demonstrated that students sometimes do not generalize across different texts. So if a student is used to seeing things in Times New Roman, go ahead and use that while they're learning to um, generalize to Arial, for example, or Cosmic Sand. Additionally, the size of the text that the student is used to seeing, and this is especially um, important when writing for a student that has visual impairments. Um, the, second the second guideline is that the story needs to be written in short, direct sentences. And um, typically there are three different formats of sentences that are used in social stories. And those are descriptive, directive, and perspective. And each type of these sentences serve specific functions within the story. So we're about to look briefly at how these three different types of sentences um, meet the needs for the students based on their function. Descriptive sentences relate what people do in a given situation and why they're doing it. So for example, the story could paint the social backdrop by using descriptive words of what is happening with the target behavior. The teacher writing the story would describe each step in the activity, so that could be like a task analysis, or they would describe the setting and the people involved in that setting. So it's critical while writing the social story to remain objective and not 
describe any assumptions of how the student would feel or would react in that situation. So um, one example would be instead of writing recess, recess games are fun, I would write children play games at recess. So now let's look at how a story would look when it's written in the correct format. After lunch, we go to recess. The bell rings when recess is finished. The children stand in a line by the door. They wait for the teacher to come. The teacher told them, great job standing in line. So in this example, we can see that the social story helps students focus on the relevant cues about what people do in a given situation and why they are doing it. We can also see in this example that descriptive stories contain a majority of descriptive sentences. The second type of sentences is directive sentences. And these directive sentences are individually stating information on how the target behavior should look. Collectively, these sentences provide a sequential list of the expected target behavior within a specific situation. These sentences highlight what the student needs to do in order to be successful in that situation. Also, it is very, very important to write it in positive language. So for example, we would write, I can walk instead of, I will not run. The end result of a sequential list in a story is that the student will have a personalized task analysis of what the target behavior looks like. Finally, um, directive sentences often start with I will. So let's look at an example of a social story written with a majority of directive sentences. I can hear the school bell. I will stop what I am doing. I will stand in line. I will wait for my teacher. I will walk behind my teacher to the classroom. Most social stories contain both descriptive and directive statements. So this would be called combination sentences. So let's look at how this would look using our previous two examples. After lunch, we go to recess. I can hear the school bell. The bell rings when recess is finished. I will stop what I am doing. The children stand in a line by the door. I will stand in a straight line. They wait for the teacher to come. The teacher told the children, great job standing in line. I will walk behind my teacher to the classroom. So in this example, we can see that the social story contained both descriptive and directive statements. And this is based entirely on the individual need of the student. Um, when you include a large number of descriptive sentences, this provides the student with an opportunity to learn how his or her behavior can change to engage in new appropriate behaviors in that situation type. However, um, for some students, this can be very confusing to them if it's mostly descriptive sentences because they won't know what is actually expected of them. So it is recommended for these type of students that you would use more directive sentences and that will describe to the student how to perform the target behavior. The third type of sentences in a social story can contain perspective statements. 
Perspective statements describe how others react in the given situation. So for example, let's look at the directive statement, I will wait for my teacher. If it was written as a perspective sentence, it would be changed to, my teacher will be happy to see all the children in line. Using perspective statements in this way tells the student how his or her teacher will respond to the new target behavior. Another example of using a perspective statement um, can be used for telling the student how other students will feel. <clears throat> so for example, you could write, some children will want to keep playing, or the children all said, oh no, when they heard the bell ring. We are almost done discussing the guidelines for writing social stories, but there are just a few more that I want to touch on briefly. So the first consideration is that you would write one concept per page. Typically, social stories separate the concepts to emphasize each point in the story. Additionally, the story typically has between one to four sentences per page. Also, it is recommended that if you use illustrations to use them sparingly, but if you do use them, make sure that the illustration is depicting what is being described on that page. Finally, in order to practice the question answer relationship we talked about earlier in the video, the title can be stated as a question and then the rest of the story can be used to answer that question. So for example, we would write a title that says, what will we do when we have a substitute teacher? And then the story, we would read the story to find out the answer to that question and practice question answering. So this concludes the video on basic guidelines. Um, although these are guidelines, I wanna stress that each student is an individual and the guidelines can be modified to meet the needs of the person that the story is written for. Please share and subscribe. Thank you.